In this presentation, we will see one way of specifying a structure type using structure tag. So let's get started. Here we can see we have a structure and we have two variables car1 and car2. Let me tell you that this structure is in the global scope. Hence it is visible to all the functions. That is why main function can access these variables because these variables are declared in the global scope. And we can see that this structure is in the global scope. That's why the structure is visible to all the functions. But what happens if you want a structure in the local scope? For this purpose, we will see a live running code. Here in this program, we have a structure which is declared in the global scope and we have a structure which is declared in the local scope, right? We can see that we have a manager function as well as the main function. Within this manager function, we have another structure which consists of same properties, but we have a different variable, right? Here we have emp1, emp2, while here we have manager variable. We actually want to store the records of the employees which are working in our company, okay? There are only two employees and one manager. Manager information should be maintained in a separate function and should be calculated separately. That's why manager function is declared. And within this function, we have declared a structure which is local to this function. This means that no other function can see this variable manager. Here we are giving the age of manager as 27. And according to the age criteria, we are also calculating the salary of the manager. If age is greater than 30, then salary would be 65,000. If it is less than 30, then it would be 55,000. Then we will return the manager's salary. In the main function, we can see that user can enter the salary of employee 1 and as well as employee 2, right? But it cannot enter the salary of the manager, right? Manager's salary is internally decided. User cannot decide the salary of manager. Only EMP1 and EMP2 salary can be decided by the user. Here, we are just using one property, that is salary property. We are not using any other property here, just for the sake of simplicity. We can see here, employee 1 salary is decided by the user, as well as employee 2 salary is also decided by the user. But manager salary is not decided by the user and only by the function call we can calculate the salary of the manager. The central idea of this code is to declare a structure in the local scope because we want the manager information to be maintained in the local scope and should not be visible outside of this function. Let's run this code now. Here we can see it is asking us to enter the salary of employee 1. Let's say the salary of employee 1 is 35,000. And now it is asking us to enter the salary of employee 2. Let's say it is 20,000. We can see here that employee 1 salary is 35,000, employee 2 salary is 20,000, and manager's salary is 55,000 because the age of manager is 27, which is less than 30, hence the salary would be 55,000. Right? Okay. Now, after seeing this code, it is clear that how to declare a structure within a local scope, right? We have seen this code already, where one structure is declared in the global scope and one structure is declared within the local scope, right? And we can also see it clearly that there is a redundancy in the code. If the manager variable is to be declared here, then there is no problem. But if we want a variable to be declared in the local scope, then we have to redeclare the whole thing within that particular function. Here, this structure has to be written once again within this function. Isn't that so? And this has to be written just for the sake of this manager variable. We just want to declare a manager variable in this local scope. That is why we have to write this whole structure once again. But this is quite cumbersome. Isn't that so? Instead of writing structures once again, we can create a type of the structure and after writing the type, we can declare variables within the functions, right? Here this is called structure tag. This whole struct employs now a user defined type. And with this user defined type, we can declare a variable within the function. Here we have just written struct employee manager within this function. We don't have to write the structure once again within the function. We just have to specify the type of the structure and then the name of the variable, right? Here within this main function also, we can see we are simply declaring emp1, emp2 of type struct employee, right? With the help of this structure tag, we are basically creating a type of the structure. And I hope that need of creating a type is now clear to you, right? Now let's see a live running code to demonstrate structure tag. 
here we just have this struct employee in the global scope right this whole structure in the global scope this is the tag of the structure employee because of this tag a new user defined type has been created and we can see within this manager function we are simply declaring a variable of this type and then we are using it and within this main function also we are simply declaring variables of this type and then we are simply using it let's run this code and it will work perfectly fine let's enter the salaries isn't that the same output we are getting 35000 20000 and 55000 right a structure tag is used to identify a particular kind of structure right so a structure tag is actually helping us to identify a particular kind of structure here in this example this is a structure tag which is helping us to create a variable inside a function without specifying the whole structure within the function right so it is helping us in the way and it is used to identify a particular kind of a structure this one is also valid right we can create a variable over here as well with the structure tag there is no problem but the actual use of a structure tag is what we have already discussed right okay friends this is it for now thank you for watching this presentation